So Owen and I have been walking the docks for a while. It's getting really noisy here in Newport. We're ready for a little chill time, a quiet ride. Yes, we found it here um, at the dock on a Highfield 660. There is an electric motor from Flux Marine. It is the 115. Yep. And um, it's been in research and development for a couple of years. Uh, brought to market about two years ago. I personally haven't had the opportunity to hear it and experience it for myself. And Owen and I are excited to get aboard with Matt Murphy from Flux. He's going to give us a ride and we're going to check it out and we're really looking forward to it. So we're going to start it up now. Um, so we got key on and then we have a motor enable button right here where it flashes. So that's a kind of a secondary key start. So now the engine is officially on. Whoa. Um, just not in gear. So we'll get a push off from, from these guys and go for a spin. It doesn't sound like the engine is on, but here we go. Lines off, casting away from the dock. We only hear water tapping up against the side of this rigid inflatable. You can see it turning. There's a little bit of a, a high-pitched kind of whirring you might hear now. So actually, you can actually see right here, high foil right here. That has twin systems of oh, ours on okay. it. Same engine. Yep, same engine. How many batteries are on that boat? That has six total. Okay. So three per. Well, it's still very quiet. Here we are at idle, just past the dock. Just a whir. Just a little bit, a little but yeah, bit mostly what you can hear is just the the hull, the, the wind and the water. Yeah. So. Now, with with uh, with this type of uh, technology, will the boat throttle up at the same speed and acceleration that it would if we were with a conventional? It the, the torque and acceleration is one of the unique things about electric, and it is pretty amazing. It jumps right up right up on plane. So it may jump up on plane faster than it might if it were. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Good. So we should get ready to hold on, yep. I guess. Right. <laughs> okay. Very little startup inertia, apparently. We're about to find out. The design of the motor case is interesting as well. We it's have a pretty. very talented design team. Did a really good, really good job. It very modern. feels very uh, Silicon Valley. I, I get a bit of a an apple. Yes. kind of feel there in is the best i mean that in the best possible yeah. way too <laughs> and you know one of the one of the nice things too was incorporating the charging on top of the outboard so it's just one less thing that we have to do in terms of integrating the boats and installing our system well how do you mean integrating the charging on top of it so right there the rectangle on top that's where you plug in the charger um, so you don't have to, you know, on some other boats, yes. it's another hole that you have to cut in the console, another spot where you have to install right. um, to, to charge it. So here, no hole in the boat, it remains in the, in, the, in the motor. And can we call an electric motor a motor? Or? Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good question. How about maintenance of that motor when you come in off the off the salt water all day long? It's it's actually completely closed. Because system. it's a closed cooling system, so yep. you don't have any water coming in. So you don't flush it at all? Nothing. So it's a closed loop cooling system. It's a gly glycol coolant mix that runs up and around the inverter, the power head, and then back down. Um, how about the exterior of the design? Does that need to be washed, washed off, rinsed off at the end of the day? Um, you know, for any boat, fresh water rinse at the end of the day is always, always a good idea. Okay, so you um, recommend that on the flux too? But there are plenty of days that we've been doing demos and stuff and aren't able to, you know, give it a fresh, fresh water rinse. So Owen is showing us the, um, the Garmin display here. Yep. So. Well, so we partnered with Garmin, um, use their display, um, Nemo Backbone, plug right into it. It's all our proprietary software. And here I'll blow up. Most of our customers will do a, a split screen like this, navigation on one side, and then our, our flux, flux dashboard on the other side. Um, but we will switch over. Out of everyone's way here. We'll switch over to just our screen so you can see, see a little bit better blown up so you can see on the left side your battery 
percentage and range. In the middle here, you got your speed, forward, neutral, reverse indicator, RPMs, and then your uh, horsepower. So we're like right right now, we're only using one horsepower. Right. And then your, your trim and tilt. So one oh, horsepower is our no wig zone idle speed. Yeah. Okay. So we're here, we'll, we'll speed it up a little bit. We'll get. And will trim and tilt work similarly to our? Identical. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You've got a, a single lever binnacle here. Yep. Would the flux mate with a joystick ever? Does it now or would it in the future? We're working on it. Okay. So, <laughs> like, so the twin systems, um, that would be very nice to have the, the joystick. Right now, it's a dual, dual throttles. Okay. Sure. Um, but in the, in the future, joystick is definitely something that's, that's on the horizon. All right, so then I'll show you where I spend most of my time screen. So there's another more detailed screen ah, here. Okay. So on the on the left, you got um, all your mechanical stats. In the middle, you have what we saw earlier. Um, but you also have your range and efficiency spelled out a little bit more, which I love. So it gives your your range in miles, but also in hours and minutes. Right. Wow. Excellent. Well, you need that. Yeah. If you, if it's, you take it down to the minute, yep. Will it will the will a red alarm come off if you're getting too close to the end of your range? So at ten percent, <laughs> I'm always the person who no, drives it, right to the point. end. At, at ten percent, it'll start. You know, you'll get a, a message up on the screen um, saying that power is being limited. Um, so basically, it'll limit your horsepower to conserve your your battery. Mm -hmm. So you'll eventually get home. You'll be take a little while. You'll be going slow. Yes, but it will take. It'll slow me down. Yep. Well and good. So, uh, did you did you share with us the the range overall yet? Yep. Did we get that? Yeah. Okay. So we're looking right. It depends on loading conditions, but right around that thirty mile range. Right. Um, at higher cruising speed, um, or about like an hour, hour and a half, depending on the model. And again, on. on this boat, that high cruising speed is near like low low twenties. Okay. So one thing nice about our software too, it gives you your kilowatt hour per mile reading yep. so your efficiency so depending on how many people you have on board or the you know the sea state and all that stuff you can mess around with the throttle and it's basically instantly calculating your energy consumption yep. and giving you that reading excellent so then you can mess around with the throttle to optimize your range excellent and the wide open throttle speed again on this is with with me i'm 30 right around 35. okay um and then so cruising it really likes that low 20 mile an hour range um, but you know, a lot of times in a 21 foot boat, you're kind of restricted yeah. to, you know, with weights and top. There. Exactly. But and if you really want to stretch that range, the max range could be found at what speed? Right around, well, we could. It would be, you know, right around three, two or three miles an hour. Okay. So if we slow this down, we'll see it start to climb around 80 miles, probably, yeah, 90. And when we need to charge up again, how long will it take to bring the flux up to full power? Again? Pretty much overnight. So most people are plugged into 50, 50 amp shore power. So It'll take eight hours? Eight, nine, 10 hours, okay. depending on where, where you're at. Um, I've done road trips where I've been trailering near the rounds and I'll stop at an EV DC fast charger on the side of the highway. Nice. And that'll get you charged back up, you know, 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Depending Great. Depending on where you're at. So here we are moving through Newport Harbor, right? Yep. And uh, there's a, a bit, of, bit of a wind and a li light chop and all I hear are wind and chop, uh, which is just what we wanted, right, Owen, when we left the dock? Yeah. Some quiet I, time, uh, some nature time. It almost feels like we're sailing. It's beautiful. Okay. Where'd that school of fish go? Oh, probably right where the birds were. I think they're going left. Where's this guy going? Great. I have a bit of a one-track mind. Can't help myself. Okay. okay. Oh, here they are. Got some false albacore, maybe some bonito. Oh, there they are. Oh yeah. Oh, are they Benito? Uh, I've been, I just saw this light splash. 
Driper's been really active. Have they? Yeah. All right, we're gonna move. We we'll probably just do a big okay. move back down the way we came. Go hard to port here. Oh, All right, we're wide open. We got three people on board, and we're doing twenty nine. So figure what, 26 knots, 25, somewhere in there. Yep. And I gotta think, I mean, for the the inshore fishing market, there are some applications. I mean, like for me, the way that I fish uh, in Western Long Island Sound on the little center console, you know, a 17 footer, Jumping in, going out 30, for a couple hours, or even you know six or eight hours. I, I, thirty miles of range isn't. It's a little it's longer a, than. It's a little bit of a stretch, but I I would say most days for me where I fish, and I've got to think there's, you know, a, a decent number of people like me where that range is actually enough to have a a, a day of fishing. Full day out there. You could slap a, a trolling motor on the bow and sort of have that as backup if you've got a compartment on a you know a twenty foot scout. Uh, and they actually scout has that as an option from, okay. from the factory. So there you have it. Yeah. And you know I think the other thing to keep in mind is these these electric outboards are only getting better, more efficient. Same with the batteries. Uh, probably more importantly, so. Down the line, I, I we'll see a lot more of this, and it'll be a lot more viable for a lot more people. So, yeah, more use cases. So we are going to stay on the uh, the electric outboard beat, and we're going to learn a little more about flux here. But stay tuned on power and motor yacht and soundings, and uh, we'll we'll have a lot more to say. See you on the water.